you run the boycott RIA.com. Um, and on that site, with that site, I know you ask fans to boycott the major labels and the music produced by them. Are you trying to send a message to the artists as well as to the organization? Yes. Um, and that message is something like, well, I, I, I suppose I could be flip and say it's worked. I mean, if you look at the numbers, I mean, the CD sales have been going down and down and down. But um, I, I, I just believe that the, uh, the stranglehold that the majors once had is now over. And uh, in a certain sense, you know, we can sort of start claiming victory. Uh, and I think it's good for artists, and I think it's good for fans because of some of the policies that have been taken in the last five years. And you also have this uh, idea that fair use should be a, the last resort defense? Well, yeah, see, you have to understand fair use is sort of like self-defense in, in, in a murder trial. In order to know what it's about, you have to shoot somebody and, get, and find your, yourself in a courtroom. And, it's a, and if you look at the, the statute, the Copyright Act, and the case law with fair use, they specifically say it's a case-by-case -case analysis. So you really can't be guided by fair use that much because no one really knows what the limits of it are. It's getting tested all the time. And, this, and the Copyright Act has a fee shift provision in it where loser pays uh, the winner, rather, gets of the attorney's fees. So who's going to go test these things? Who's going to go make the new law you know, to expand fair use? You, you really have to be brave. What do you think it'll take? I mean, what is the tipping point going to be for all of you when the policy finally does change to address new technology and the way that things are moving? You mean in terms of lawsuits or in general? Lawsuits, <laughs> but kind of in general. I mean, the lawsuits are really indicative of, of the way that the uh, industry's model is not holding up any longer. Um, and so policy will also obviously have to address that. What, what do you think it'll, it'll take? Uh, well, I mean, there are a couple of different, okay, just like, so any of you who are here for the webcasting uh, streaming panel, I mean, you see that there's sort of a lot of action going on in Washington, D.C., and D.C. is all about insiders, as most people know, and so if you're not a big industry, you don't have a bunch of lobbyists, it's very hard to get your voice heard there. Um, so, there so there, I think, that's, <laughs> that's unlikely to change anytime soon. Um, but I think in the marketplace, and especially in the technology marketplace, things like Creative Commons, uh, independent labels, new ventures, I think there's a lot of excitement. Part of the problem, I think though, is, and this is an internet problem in general, is getting enough money to kind of really invest in the infrastructure you need, right? So I was talking with some folks earlier, it's like, why do major acts still sign up with major labels? Well, there are a lot of reasons, but one of them is that it takes a lot of money as a major act if you really want to do like the video and you know, travel around the world and do all this stuff. And, you know, very few people get to do that, but there is this sort of promise of, you know, a big advance and these kind of things. And it never actually really maybe ends up paying off in the end, but there's this kind of sense of there's an infrastructure. You don't have to do it all yourself, right? And so I think to the extent that some of that changes and that there are infrastructures now being built uh, to supplant that major label infrastructure, I think you'll see acts that are very popular starting to move away more and more. The other thing is that we need to come up with payment systems. And I know there's been a ton of debate about this, about what's the proper way to pay artists. Um, and I think, again, the webcasting panel is really interesting because it, it, uh, Tim talked about all the pressure that's on the webcasters to fork over the money. I think we need a lot of different revenue sources, not just one, right? So if we can make the pie a lot bigger with lots of inputs, lots of little streams and putting into the river, then also against, I think, the financial infrastructure can make, can, uh, can make it happen. The other piece, and this is, this is sort of an EFF piece, I'll just say, is also that I think we need to be really careful about staying technology neutral. That there is a real tendency, I think, when people want to design a business model to tie it to a particular technology, right? So Apple and Steve Jobs has his iTunes and his iPod, and it's like a silo, right? You're, it's like, you're like a little Roche motel, you get sort of locked in, right? You can't get your stuff out, right? And uh, you have other business models where it's like, oh no, you have to subscribe to these people and use this technology and you can't switch it around, right? And I think those are always dying industries, right? It's like, you know, you always have stuff left over that doesn't work anymore. Um, and so I think it's really important that no matter what solution we come up with, the real advantage 
is going to be interoperability between all these technologies, people who can you know, take their music and use it anywhere they want. Uh, I think if you look at the very successful web industries, you see that, right? Google, any browser works with Google, right? It's not linked to one. Sure, the little main just for each one, but I think that, that you, know, you see a lot of great web services that succeed because every single computing device that gets on the internet can use it. 